let's just sew whatever. All right, so I'm getting started on cutting out the large Transponster tote bag from Sincerely Jed Patterns. And the first thing I'm doing is putting the cut, the cut size on the pattern pieces. Um, I know she does this so that um, it's just like a simpler looking pattern piece basically so it's less overwhelming especially for beginners and you can just use the pattern piece and not have to worry about your cut squares. There is also a cut list within the pattern like the very first thing so you could just print that out and then just print out your non-square pieces. Um, but I like having the pattern pieces, but I like having the measurements on there, so I'm just going ahead and really quickly writing it on there. It doesn't take long. <coughs> um, and then I'm going to divide lining, accent, contrast, etc. Um, the exterior pieces are much larger than the lining pieces, and that's because you're lining goes down further in and your exterior comes down within your lining. Um, so it's a really interesting um, way of coming together. Large bottom panel, large exterior main. Okay, perfect. So then I've got my lining only pile, I've got my Decaville heavy only pile, my exterior only pile, and then there's also an additional cut list, um, which are not pattern pieces, but they are listed in the additional cut list within the pattern. So keep that in mind, however you'd like to do that. Um, I am debating putting this as my exterior side panel. Um, just so I don't have to use more than one roll of vinyl for the exterior of the bag. But I have to ask, I think my mom would like it. Like, I think it would be a fun little pop. It would tie together the webbing I'm using as well. So I think I'm going to use this for my side panels. Um, I am not going to be interfacing the side panels still because um, I just think it would be too much. And if you are adding the Decaville light to your lining side panels, just make sure to um, cut it down by about half an inch or even one inch so that it's not within your side seams, especially if you have a domestic machine and you're trying to make this bag on it. Um, again, I believe that she did not change that to the pattern um, so that there were less pattern pieces possibly. I don't know. Maybe I'll bring it up to her. She'll be like, hey, I don't think that'll work. <laughs> or maybe it says to trim it. That's why you should read the pattern. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, trim half an inch seam allowance from each of the Decaville light pieces and then fuse them on the wrong side of the lining main panels and then the um, top Decaville heavy gets fused to your exterior pieces. Okay, great. Um, so what I love so far about this pattern is that the large exterior is exactly 18 inches, which means I can get it out of an 18 inch roll. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I was just thinking like, I don't buy yardage anymore, it feels like. So like, what am I, what have I gotta do? Okay, so there is one of the main panels. This bag is going to be massive. Um, I think I already said it, but like my mom carries a bag that seriously looks identical to this. Um, and when I showed it to her, she was like, oh, yeah, I want one. I was like, okay, great. Because otherwise I don't know that I could sell the large size on my website and like ship it practically. So there are my two exterior pieces. Um, I'm probably going to have this video divided up time-wise in my life because I don't have time today to finish it. 
um, until later, possibly. Here is the bottom. <laughs> the bottom of this is so big. <laughs> oh, it's literally the same size as what my mom carries right now, though, so I'm, like, I'm really excited. She's going to be very, very happy. Um, this is my strap tab. I could cut that out later. Um, handle accents. Yep, okay, that's that top piece. I don't think I'm going to add that to this bag. I like the idea of it, but I think I'm just going to do like a faux rolled handle instead. Um, and here's a zipper pocket. There's a slip pocket accent. I can cut that out. And the zipper panels, I was going to cut those out super quick from this vinyl. Okay. Oof, that is a wide panel. Yep, okay. This seems like it would be a really good, like, beach bag too for like a big family or um, if you go to baseball games stuff like that and you need like a really big bag that's like wide open but fancy this would be a fun one um, I do have a video making the sh medium size but it is before the pattern was updated to add a few things um, so keep that in mind and what I've just done on the zipper panels and I, is I marked one inch because we're going to fold in when we create our zipper panel. So there is that. We've got our eight by one inch slip pocket accent. Um, my mom stated that she liked that there was a D-ring clip for her keys, so I'm also going to cut out something like that with what I have in front of me. Maybe I'll just do like 8 by 2 No, we'll do 8 by one and a half. One and a half. Um, and I'll just use like a 3 quarter inch snap hook so that she's got something to easily find her keys. Um, I'm not going to be adding a zipper tab. I'm going to use zipper end hardware. Strap tab stabilizer is heavy. Um, so I got that, that, slip pocket, interior zipper pocket. 16 by 10. So she's got it like a 16 inch wide zipper. That's a little excessive for what I would like. So I'm going to do 12 inches. So I'm going to cut a zipper overlay that's 12 by 2. From this direction. And then, as I've done in the past, I'm measuring three quarters in from each outer edge and cutting down in the middle as close as I can to those lines without going over the lines, and then I'll snip the rest.
That looks like a nice, a nice size. Um, how much time we got left? 25 minutes. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to need another roll so that I can cut out that front slip pocket. I don't think it would look right to do the waterproof canvas for that, so I won't. Um, I think I can do my strap accent pieces, so I will. I think it's a nice little addition. Um, and then it looks like I have enough perfectly to cut out that strap tab. Sweet. So I'm going to fold that in half. Line it up with the fold. Um, and then you could honestly use any overlay like this that you like, or you could even omit it. It is not necessary, but it does make the strap a little fancier. Um, if you prefer the one from like Lynn's Handmaid's Patterns, you could just use that. You do need two of those. I might end up tracing this one. Really? Um, I will go ahead and fuse the Decaville Heavy on those. Um, I didn't on my last one, and I do think it's a nice addition. Oh, those are drastically different sizes. How fun is that? Eh, it's fine. It's, it's handmade, right? Okay, so I'm done with that piece, so I'll go ahead and clip it behind my additional cut list. Watch me not have more of that. How funny would that be? <laughs> I don't think I do. Ah, there it is. Let's verify, but I'm pretty sure. Yay! Okay, great. <clears throat> that would been funny. <clears throat> okay. Eight by eleven and a quarter. And I am going to be adding two of these, one to each side. Whew. That's a big packet. Oh yeah, which means I need two of the overlay pieces. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I honestly, like, you could get away with not having that overlay, um, and you would just put right sides together, but I do think it's a nice touch. 
but I am not using an accent fabric for that, so it's almost kind of like, does it need it? Hmm. Okay. Slip pocket. So I'm putting these in my lining pile, in lining of those. Need one more accent and then I need another handle overlay. Another overlay, um, and then the handle accent. taping the handle accents. I'm just adding a piece of tape <clears throat> to each end of the overlay accent. Totally up to you how you want to do it. Um, but that, oh, connectors, that's right. Two by six. Perfect, perfect. Um, one thing I really loved about this pattern was how the connectors are inside the bag, making it <clears throat> honestly like super optional if you want to do that or not. Okay, what is this? Oh yeah, for the <laughs> I'm gonna write it down. Key ring, key, key hanger, key hanger. Okay, connectors. Um, I have cut out three other bags today so I'm just like what what is this now what is this what what is this <laughs> what's that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my Decaville light because I have time to finish that task uh, Decaville heavy I'm sorry Decaville heavy and this is an incredible way to use up scraps I'm telling you these little pieces that are required I love it so much. Like I have tons of these little strips that I just never got rid of um, and they're perfect for this part. Makes my heart so happy. Like, I can, I'm pretty sure that's an 18 inch one right there. Let's see what else we got. And the location of these pieces mark the top of the bag so that Decaville Light is still a domestic friendly, ugh, heavy, it's Decaville heavy. Um, it's a domestic friendly, way to add extra stabilization but it's not all over the entire bag so really a cool way to stabilize 
the top of the bag. Um, we can write side, side, top. And if you're using a directional print, um, that stabilizer is really nice so that when you go to your sewing machine, you know which one is the top because it has that stabilizer piece. I mean, you can also mark it with like little arrows and whatnot, but. I don't know, which is nice. Nice! All right, now we've got a Decaville Heavy Scrap Avalanche over here. Okay. I don't have another scrap long enough, so I will go ahead and cut that next one from the long side here. Get this one to 18. That's my bad. Shrink. Okay, and then the bottom. So I've got my side and my top. Now I will do this bottom panel. Dang. Yeah, it'll be fine. I can always fill in that little chunk with a scrap. Large bottom stabilizer. <sighs> Alright, I was thinking about cutting my exterior side panel super quick. I love how I'm saying these things as if you're watching this as it's happening, but like you don't know that it'll be hours before I get to go back to this. Yeah, this waterproof canvas is gonna be perfect on the side panel. I'm so excited. Because, like, a bag this big does need structure, but you got to think you're also going to be putting, well, I know the intended receiver of this bag is going to be putting a lot, a lot, a lot in it. Um, so it just makes sense. 
to let it have structure from the items in it, you know. And now I am marking out the dart lines. And what I did was I just used an X-Acto knife to kind of cut into the pattern piece. And you aren't going to be cutting that away. You're going to be folding that on itself and sewing the dart. So I mean, if you do feel like you have to cut, just make sure you leave that seam allowance. But we'll repeat that on the other side as well. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and mark out my centers. And then if your print isn't directional, you can um, go in the opposite direction for your next piece to save fabric. exterior side panels. Mm -hmm. Because these pieces are just squares next and like it doesn't matter if they're perfect. I'm just going to go ahead and rough cut. These are the slip pockets. <clears throat> yeah, that's within my seam allowance, so I'm not going to worry about it. I could even kind of even it out if I wanted to, but not a big deal. And then we've got, I think, just enough for the zipper panel piece. Mm-hmm. Nice. Again, that's within our seam allowance, so not a big deal.
Mm. You just throw that anywhere. That's pretty much it for the exterior and we can move on to finishing up all of our lining pieces cutting out our zipper pocket which I have decided to make smaller than in the original pattern oh my god scared me all right now it is time to finish up cutting the interior of this bag and interface it. So I'm going to start with the last of this additional cut list here. Um, the interior zipper pocket I have decided to do um, I think it was 14, no, 12, 12 by 10. So I'm gonna cut two 12 by 10. I think that is plenty big enough. So I need two of those. Um, and technically I could cut one smaller because I'm doing um, the overlay method instead of like the right side together, sew your box, flip it through. Um, that is definitely one of the easiest methods for adding a zipper pocket. Um, definitely nothing wrong with it. This is just my preferred method because it doesn't require an iron. Um, and lately I just I have not been reaching for an iron so that's my reasoning there. Um, expo marker my list. So that's my zipper pocket slip accent Zipper panels. Okay, great. Um, I'm not adding the main zipper tab. I'm going to use uh, zipper end hardware. So the rest is just going to be my webbing um, and then my little bit of strap tab stabilizer that I forgot to cut earlier. But I wasn't in a hurry. So now it is on to the pattern pieces. So I'll go ahead and start with the main bottom panel. Now this one says fusible woven interfacing and Decaville light. And I am considering adding Decaville light to the bottom of this because I only have Decaville heavy on the exterior and it's a massive bag. Um, so I would say it's probably not a bad idea to add that. Okay, so Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I didn't cut through it too hard and it'll fuse just fine. Make sure nothing's done in your ear stuff. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't my fabric 
Like, I have plenty of Decaville Heavy. And like I said, it'll fuse back together, but like, oh no. check that really quick. Boy did I write down the wrong measurement um, for the bottom panel which is good. Glad I checked. That would have been disastrous. I would have figured it out when I went to interface but bummer. Okay. So there is that bottom panel which like I said I I do think I'm going to add that Decaville light. Can make something fun out of those. Um, so for the Decaville light, you're going to want to cut it half an inch shorter on all sides which would be one inch minus the measurements given Not quite enough there. So I'm going to cut this just a little bit bigger than it needs to be on the one side so that I can square it up on my next cut. And then I still need to do with a sharper blade that usually works. Um, I still need to do my side panels. Now I'm debating, like, do I need Decaville light on these panels as well? I don't think so, though. Like, I really don't want the bag to be too heavy, and I worry that that could make it heavy. I absolutely love that size of zipper panel. It is 12 inches. As anytime you want to do a zipper pocket, with this overlay you want to make sure that your lining pieces are the same width as your overlay. So that looks fantastic. I could not be happier with that. So I'm clipping all of these lining pieces together at the moment. 
just to help keep it straight. It's such a large bag. I'm going to need all the help I can get in that category. Um, okay, large lining. Side panel is the last little bit before we move on to our webbing. Large lining side panel. So I can go ahead and wait. No, I can hang that up. That 18 by 18 ruler is one of my favorites. Um, it is coming to So Magical Expos, but there is no way at all possible that we can ship that bad boy. So I sincerely apologize. Um, my mom, who is receiving this bag, really likes to put, um, she has this huge bag divider in her purse, um, and carries everything with her that she's ever been given in her life. Not really, but it seems like it. <laughs> Okay. Lining. Um, this bag could definitely use um, like a big slip pocket if you wanted to add like the cargo slip pockets to the inside. Um, you'd want to cut that to about 20, 21 inches wide and maybe if you're doing the one fold over, it's 11, 
probably nine inches tall. So maybe like 21 by nine. Fold over that top edge, top stitch it, etc., etc., and that would be to add a cargo slip pocket, kind of like the um, Felicity bag from Bagstock. It's one of my favorite pockets to add to things. Um, so let's grab our whoop, stack of the light and have an, aval an avalanche. not going to be too particular about losing out on a small portion of the Decaville light for that bottom panel and the lining because um, it's not going to be a deal breaker. And I don't want to use up any more large pieces. So let's go ahead and interface this and call it a day. I am starting with the interfacing on the lining. Which I cut too wide. Okay, though, look at that. So we'll press that for a few seconds, especially with waterproof canvas. You want to go slow. Um, if you've not used a heat press before to interface, it is absolutely wonderful. Make sure you've got a Teflon sheet to prevent any interfacing from sticking. Um, and if you need to clean the pad every once in a while, that Decaville light is now set. It is in place and so wonderful to know that it's for sure in place. Alright, so that was my lining bottom. This is my exterior bottom. And again, I've got little chunks missing. It's not that detrimental to the bag to prevent waste of that stabilizer. You could always frank infuse. And then again, just 10 seconds on vinyl at a time. Definitely test it first, and I always do the face of the vinyl down on the surface. You never want the top of the vinyl touching your heating element. <laughs> now I'll piece these back together. Oh my goodness. I have my strap connector pieces. Now, if you're worried about your stabilizer moving, you can warm up a part of it or even use double-sided tape um, to get that glue kind of tacky, set it down, and then it won't move. So I'm just using my fingernails to warm it up, to hold it against the heating element to warm it up, I should say. My fingernails are not going to warm it up. It's 10 seconds. That's satisfying. I love it. All right, now this is our side exterior stabilizer. And this gets placed half an inch from the top and centered. So I definitely want to warm this up before I place it. So it's going to be about an inch from each side in. 
and this gets placed on the exterior fabric. And then I just have two more pieces, my exteriors to fuse. You could also use um, Fabric Therapy's self-adhesive if you wanted to. And don't forget to cut out your webbing. And that stabilizer just makes such a difference when you're creating the bag. You know exactly where to fold it down and top stitch. And like I said, it doesn't add a ton of bulk. It just makes it that much easier. Ooh. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. And don't forget to turn off your heat press. Okay, just so I don't forget, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the main handles to 40 inches for now. I can always shorten them, but I, I think my mom's going to want them longer than the pattern has. Um, I was also looking at my mom's bag that's similar and the handles are on the inside of the bag, so I'm also thinking if I make another of this style bag, I might do like a little hack for that in case you don't want webbing all along the front, because I feel like it's a totally different vibe. So there are my two handles. And then a 60 inch crossbody strap. So to do that, I usually just do 30 and 30. And then from that, you're going to cut four inches off of one of the pieces. But they go together. In case you're like, then why would I cut it? <laughs> it all comes back together. Um, but that is it for cutting the large transponster tote. Um, if you are not aware, uh, Jenny writes all of her patterns and names them after friends quotes. Um, and that's what Chandler Bong is. He's a transponster. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for hanging out. I can't wait to make this bag, and I will see you next time. Bye.